right, another little go-to from Controlled Obsession Customs. Going to put a second coat, a liquid mask, on a couple that are in the booth right now. We have a 240Z that we're doing for a customer that wants it to look exactly like his 240Z, which is going to look like this. And then we have the ET410.2 Techno, which uh, is just taking the world by storm. And um, just finished that build, and we're putting a second coat on this. The wing, actually, the coat has to go on the underside of it so that when you see it, obviously that is the will be the clear coat, so it looks proper. But this is also getting a second coat. And that body, the customer has asked that it look like this. All right. Um, you can spray this. I prefer not to spray liquid mask in my booth. Um, I like to spray liquid mask outside. Um, I have the gun for it. I have everything I need for it. I literally haven't done it yet because I haven't found the need to do it yet. And it's freezing outside. And realistically, when you spray any of this stuff, you want it to be roughly 70 degrees. So obviously that is not happening for a few months. So very simply, usually just put a plop and a little plop. And that's it for that one, you know? And um, main thing is just getting it everywhere, you know? Making sure you utilize it. And you wanna make sure like this one right here, the, the stuff that I use, spastics liquid mask um i'd love to try the bitty design if i could get the bitty design i had it on back order for three months from italy could not get it finally took it off back order because i needed liquid mask i can't wait forever i've been using the spastics and i gotta say it's available and i've had zero issues with it it works fantastic um my only suggestion is three coats two coats are rough to work with three coats are great um, and the main thing is when you don't want to apply it, if you still see like the blue in here, um, because what that means is that it hasn't cured. And if it hasn't cured yet, and you try and you try and apply more liquid mask over it, if you're spraying it, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. But with the brush, when you're moving the brush around, you'll actually remove the first layer of liquid mask so now basically when you think you have two coats you literally only have one coat because you've removed the first coat and now the second coat is just over where that coat was so it's very important that you wait till you have a very it i call it clear it's still a light blue finish in there but you'll you'll blatantly tell when it's not cured yet you'll see like still a much like denser blue in there um, but on to just getting it going. Um, there's no really rhyme or reason with this. You just want to, you know, make sure you get it in all the nooks and crannies, you know, especially like here, how you have the lights that are coming in. This is going to get all light be bezels with led bezels and everything. So when I actually cut this out, I'm going to leave, um, the lights right here. They're going to stay till the absolute very end. So they're actually still going to be clear. And then it will get a chrome light bezel behind it with an LED bucket. And that way it's literally going to look factory. And that's what this gentleman would like is, you know, the, the factory look. And that's what we are doing. Um, he has a carbon fiber lip on the front, which is it's going to be fun to experiment with that to uh try and get that done you know there's different ways to do it you know um some people use drywall tape to get the effect um some people use believe it or not um cabinet liner to get the effect there's different ways to get to effect um both of them really work you're just going to make sure you use you know always test ahead of time do a test panel and try and see which colors you got to lay down first to really you know get the effect you need because 
you know, these things all get painted backwards. You know, you paint them from the inside out. The Lexan is actually the clear coat. So, you know, all your details literally got to come first. So you got to really know what you're, what you're painting. You got to know what effect you're going for because if you run the paints in the wrong order, it's just going to look horrible. Um, for the most part, there, there are slight verities in the rule as there is with every rule, but um, always dark to light um, on Lexan, always. Uh, like I said, there's certain spots, certain effects, you would maybe not follow that rule, um, and you would learn that as you went along. Where if you were painting, you know, regular, you would actually paint, you know, a lot of your whites first and go from there, go darker. Because um, if you put a light over a dark, the dark is going to come through the light. Where if you paint dark over light, the light's not going to come through the dark. So... As you can see, like I said, no rhyme or reason. The main thing that you want to do is get get it all everywhere that you need it, you know? And um, you'll feel like a tackiness. If you feel the brush is dragging and it feels too tacky, go to where you have. See, I still have some excess over here. Get your excess. Keep pulling from excess spots and then bring it over to where you need it. Get it in the brushes because you don't want to pull the existing layer up. You want to make sure that that existing layer stays there, and that way you get the two coats. Now, you can work two coats, you know, you, you, you can get away with just doing two coats, but I just feel when you're doing fine lines, say you're doing like flame work or something like that, and you're doing pinstripe flames, um, it's just much harder to, let me try and save this right here. It's just much harder to get those lines to pull up cleanly and evenly. Um, another thing, too, which everybody should know, but you don't know what everyone knows until you know. Um, always use a new razor. Don't ever try and cut corners and use and you know a razor that you used on. A previous body it's it's not worth it it will not work you know i don't care who you are it will not work um now right here i'm actually gonna pull this i'm gonna pull the wing cover right from actually in here so I'm going to try and flop this. Like I said, this right here, you literally, when you do a wing like this, a Lexan wing, the way the way that the molding happens with Lexan is it's a vacuum mold. So they literally can't uh, mold it this side up. It can't be done. It has to be molded this side down. So what happens is that your protective film is on the side that you have to paint. Normally, it's opposite. Like this one right here, the protective film's on the outside. So when you're all done and everything's all set, you pull off the protective film to get rid of any overspray. With this one right here, you literally have to pull the protective film off, then wash it, then liquid mask it. And then when I go to paint it, I'm going to actually have to tape off what is what will be the clean side as the protective film to not get any overspray on it. And then cut your graphics here. And that way... Once it's on the body, this will be the clear coat and it'll have the right um, the right shine to it, the right finish. So, very simple with the wing, yada, 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 you know, very good. So, and it's going to, you know, it's, I, um, I do not try to accelerate anything with heat. Um, anytime you try to accelerate any product with heat, um, the only thing you're doing is you're getting a, you're getting a quicker dry time, but you never get a quicker cure time ever. In all reality, you literally, believe it or not, make your, um, you make your cure time longer. Okay. And the reason being 
is that when you put heat to something, whether it's whether it's liquid mask, most importantly, when it's paint, um, what you are doing is you're drying the outside, but you're not drying the paint. You're only drying the outside. And then what happens is it literally creates a trap. It creates, um, it basically, it seals it. So now what you've done is you've created an airproof seal on the paint and you have trapped moisture. These are water-based products. You've trapped moisture inside of that seal that you've just made. So you're not going to get the finish you want. Um, the curing is not going to happen the way that you hoped it would. You're literally, you're not helping anything, like nothing at all. And some paints, say like a candy, candies cannot be accelerated at all in any way, shape or form. Um, you try to accelerate a candy, you will destroy the candy. It will not come out candy. Um, that's why a lot of people don't like to use candy because it's very time consuming. But the fact of the matter is, is, I mean, I love working with candies. There's nothing like ghosting stuff with candies because, oh, just the, the effect you have behind it to really allow stuff to ghost in and, um, to hide it and only see it at certain angles is, I, I just love that stuff. I think it's the, the coolest thing, you know, to, to look at a body and you see, you know, what it looks like at one angle. Oh, I actually used a lot more on this body than I needed. This, see like this right here, this is really thick, right? So it can be good. It can be bad. Sometimes it settles and it'll drip down. Um, but really just try and utilize it and spread the same thickness over the whole entire thing. Um, it ain't going to hurt anything. It's just going to add more, more cure time, which ain't a big deal, you know, just, I mean, it is a big deal if you put it on too thick because then the same thing can happen as, as if you added heat to it is you're going to create, um, a seal where the moisture gets trapped inside of it. That's the last thing that you want. I wish I had another body to spread this to, but that's all right. It's all even in there. Just keep trying to find spots that are bare. Try and really spread out a nice, you know, something like this where I happen to use more than I should have. It's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. In all reality, this may just need two coats simply because of how thick this coat is. If it ends up, you know, staying um, cause what you'll see lots of times is like right here, I'm trying to bring everything up. I'm trying to, you know, now with this right here, normally I would hold the body like this. Like I would let it sit like this and just let it dry and I'll visit it every day until it's ready to go. Um, in this case, because there is excess liquid mask in there, what I will actually do is I'll have it sit like this and I'll come check on it because having it sit like this if the liquid mass does want to drip down, it's going to want to come in all these crevices all over here and everything and do exactly what I said. It's going to pool up. If it's too much, then it's going to just add cure time to it. Um, so doing it like this, it'll simply fall to the bottom if it is going to fall. And then you'll simply have some down here and just, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Um, so that's that right there, and uh, be back again when we're ready to uh, do the next coat. Like I said, this might not need another coat because this is really ah, certain spots, like right there. Like it's it's tough, you know. It's you want to get it just right. You'll sit there and I'll look at this thing forever and just keep on adding more, adding more if you want, you know. But that is perfecto right there, and now we just simply. I'm going to let all this dry. So you can already see on this one right here, you can already see where it's starting to dry, where you're starting to see it get clear. But it's what you want to do. You want it to get a nice clear finish until you don't see any of that blue anymore. And that's when you know that it's ready for the next coat. All right. Well, thanks again for this little tidbit from Controlled Obsession Customs. And 
We'll see you next time.